okay so as we said before in the elevator if the elevator is at rest or if the elevator moves with constant constant velocity so both cases mean that the acceleration is zero and in this case the weight equals to the normal force the weight equals to the normal force so the scale in the inside the elevator will give you the true or the actual reading but if the elevator accelerates upward we say the normal force equals w w plus mass times acceleration or you can say mg plus ma or you can say m G plus A. So the normal force expresses the reading of the scale. On the other side, if the elevator accelerates downward, we found that the normal force, which is the reading of the scale, equals W minus MA, or you can say G minus MA, or M G minus A. Okay? So this is when the elevator accelerates downward. So we had three cases. At rest or constant velocity means zero. Acceleration means the normal force equals the weight. Accelerating upward, so it gives you a, a, a more reading than the actual reading because it's W plus MA. If it accelerates downward, it gives you less, less reading than the actual one because it's W minus MA. And we have studied some problems about this issue. So after that, we need to discuss what we call the centripetal force. Centripetal force. We have discussed before the centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration. And we said if an object moves in a, in, in a circle or in a curve, there must be a centripetal acceleration. What is, the, what is the direction of this centripetal acceleration? We said toward the center of the curve or the center of the circle. Like, for example, this uh, guy, he is spinning a ball using a string. So he holds the ball with a string, and he spins it in a circle. So there must be a centripetal acceleration. There must be a centripetal acceleration in the direction to the center. Where is the center of the curve? Let's say somewhere here. On his arm okay this is the center of the curve or the center of the circle so there is a centripetal acceleration c in this direction and from newton's second law newton second law says if there is a force or if there is a centripetal acceleration there must be a force in this direction which will we will call it centripetal force if there is an acceleration so there is a force if there is a centripetal acceleration, so there is a centripetal force because the force and, and acceleration, they have the same direction. They have the same direction. So that means we have a force toward the center of the curve. It is the force exerted toward the center of the circle or the curve, and we know it as centripetal force. So where is the centripetal force in our case here? It's the force in the string, the force in the string, the pull force or the tension force. We call it tension, 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 shed. Okay. So the tension force in this string is the force toward the center of this circle. So this is the centripetal force in this case. Okay. Let's take another example. When Earth orbits around the sun, okay there is a force that attracts the earth toward the center of the sun and we have discussed this force before it's called gravitational force if you remember the gravitational force equals what equals what g times the mass of the first planet times the mass of the second planet divided by the distance square okay this force attracts the two objects together. So the Earth is attracted to the center of the sun by this gravitational force. 
and the earth moves in a circular it's not it's not exactly circular but it's very very near to be a circular path okay very near to be a circular path uh, so this centripetal force is our gravitational force the centripetal force here is the gravitational force that the sun pulls the earth with let's take another example uh, a car moves in a circle okay it moves in a circular road so there should be a centripetal acceleration and there should be a centripetal force what is the centripetal force here can you guess what is the centripetal force in case of this man we said it's the, the pulling force the tension force in case of the earth and the sun we said it's the gravitational force in case of the car what is it what do you think guys what is this force hmm. Actually, it's the friction on the tires. The friction, friction, the friction force on the tires of the car. When the car moves in a circle, the friction force will have a direction in between the tangent and the This is the tangent direction, tangent, mass, and the radial direction is the one toward the center. We call it radial. Of course, it should be the other direction, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So this is the friction force on the tires. We can resolve this force into two components. Let's make it in different color. This is one of them in the direction of motion, and the other one is in the central direction. So this part of friction in the central direction is the centripetal force in this case. Okay, so the centripetal force is a friction force here. Let's take another example, the roller coaster. The roller coaster in the amusement parks, it moves in, in like on, on a railroad or a railway. Okay, so in part of this way, some part is like a curve and this curve has a center c so there must be a centripetal acceleration and there must be a centripetal force the centripetal force goes toward what goes toward the center what is the centripetal force here uh, what do you think what is it hmm. Somebody says it's the weight. Actually, you are very close to the right answer, but it's the weight and there is something else. There's something else because it's a combination of two forces together now. The centripetal force huh, will be a combination between two forces. What are the these two forces? Force? Weight and, and the normal force. The weight and the normal force. Why is that? The centripetal force is this force, Fc. It's toward the center. We have two forces in this direction. We have the weight of the train or the weight of the cart. I will call it W, which is mass times gravity. But there is also an opposite force. There is another force. There is another force, which is the normal force or the normal reaction. Call it whatever you call it. So the centripetal force equals what? Equals W minus N. W minus N. Why W minus N? Because W is downward, N is upward, so they are opposite to each other. The centripetal force is the difference in between. The centripetal force is the difference, difference between those two forces. Okay, guys? So these are some examples of the centripetal forces in different cases. So again, if the object is in a circle or a curve, so there must be a centripetal acceleration. So there must be a centripetal force. This centripetal force might be a tension, might be a friction, might be a gravitational force, might be a difference between two forces, doesn't matter, okay? But it must be 
word the, 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 the center, this curve. Okay. The next part here is impulse and momentum. Impulse and momentum. Momentum, we have discussed the momentum before. And we said momentum is mass times velocity, not speed, velocity. And the momentum is a vector. Momentum is a vector. So if we have a motion to the right and to the left, the momentum will be positive to the right, negative to the left. You need to take care of this issue. Okay, because in the problems, it plays usually with the direction of momentum. Okay, so the momentum is a vector equals mass times velocity. Impulse, دفع. Impulse. What is it? Let's assume a box here. This is a box, and you need to push this box. You need to push the box. So you apply your force to the box. You apply your force F. For some time, let's say time t or time delta t. Okay, so this is the time of the application of the force. The impulse J equals the force times time. The force times the time you apply it for. Okay, and actually, actually, the original equation for the, the impulse it is the integration of force with respect to time integration of force with respect to time but when the force is constant when the force is constant and it does not change its direction so we can simplify it into force times time okay so this is the impulse the impulse also is a vector impulse is a vector so it has direction in this case, let's say you apply a force 100 Newton for like six seconds. So what is your impulse? What is the impulse you give to the box? You give force 100 Newton in six seconds. So that's 600 Newton second. So your impulse is 600. What is the function of the impulse or what is the purpose of the impulse? The impulse can change the velocity of the object. The impulse can change the velocity of the object. If the object was at rest, you will move it so its final velocity will be, let's say, 2 meters per second or something. Okay, so you change the velocity of the object. In other words, here you change the momentum because momentum is mass times velocity. So you can change the momentum of the object. So the impulse at DAFA will change the momentum of the object. We need to prove that mathematically. Mathematically. I know from Newton's second that the net force equals mass times acceleration. And I know that the acceleration is delta V over delta T. Right, the change in velocity over the period. Let's take this delta t from the denominator here to the left hand side to the numerator on the other side. So I will multiply it times net force. So the net force times delta t. Okay, what is it? This is the impulse. This is the impulse equals mass times delta v. And what's delta V? Delta V is V final minus V initial, the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So I can rewrite it as M V final minus V initial. Or I can distribute it M times V final minus M times V initial. What's M V final? Mass times the final velocity. This is the final momentum or the momentum at the end. What's m times v initial? This is the moment at the beginning. So what does, what does it mean? The, the final momentum minus the initial momentum, this is the change in momentum. Okay? So the impulse equals the change in 
in momentum. Okay, so the impulse equals the change in momentum, and mathematically, we use this equation. The momentum equals F times delta T equals M delta V or M V final minus V initial or M V final minus M V initial. All of them are the same. Or you can, some, some people might say P final minus P initial. Final momentum minus initial momentum. It's okay. You can also say it. Okay, guys? So this is the relation between impulse and momentum. Let's solve a problem here. In a head-on collision, collision is tasadum. In a head-on collision, a car stops in 0.1 second from a speed 14 meter per second. That means the initial speed of the car was 14. And then it stops, meaning its final speed becomes zero. And this happens in a time 0.1 second. Okay. The driver has a mass 70 kilogram. So we know the mass of the driver. Firstly, he was tightly strapped into his seat. He tightened his seat. So he was hauled to the seat with the seat belt. So we consider him as part of the, of the car. What force is applied to the driver by the seat belt? Of course, if you are, or if somebody is, and he's like driving his car, but he attached his seat belt. In case of accidents, in case of accidents, this seat belt applies a force on the body. It will apply a huge amount of force, as we know before. We knew that before. It applies a force on the body. And we said this force, the force of the seat belt, equals what? Equals mass times acceleration. Okay, and we have discussed similar problems uh, like two uh, lectures ago. He asks here, what is the force applied to the driver by the seatbelt? I know that the force equals times acceleration. This force equals mass times acceleration. The mass of the object is 7 kilogram. What about his acceleration? The same acceleration like the car, which is V final minus V initial over T. So 70 times V final is 0, V initial is 14, divided by the time 0.1, the result will be negative 9,800 Newton. So we can solve the problem using Newton's second law. But I want you to solve it using the concept of impulse and momentum. The acting force, the force of the seat belt, is the application time, the time it's applied to the passenger or the driver, equals the change in momentum. Change in momentum is mv final minus mv initial. Or you can take m common factor, it becomes v final minus v initial, final velocity minus initial velocity. So I'm searching for the seat belt force. So the seat belt force time is it was applied for 0.1 second equals the mass of the passenger times the final speed, sorry, the final velocity minus initial velocity. The result will be negative 9,800 Newton. So it gives you the same answer like before. So if you use Newton's second law, or if you use the concept of impulse and momentum, they will give you the same answer. So when should I use the impulse and momentum? When should I use it? If you have force and you have a time and you have a mass and you have final velocity and you have initial velocity. So he gives you like uh, four of them and he will ask for the fifth one. So the fifth one will be unknown. The fifth one might be the force, be the time, might be the final velocity, might be the initial velocity. Okay, usually it's not the mass, but maybe the mass, why not? So he gives you four of them, and he will ask you for the fifth one. In this case, you can use the impulse and momentum. Okay, guys, let's see another problem. A tennis ball, tennis, 
ball approaches a racket. Racket, uh, the, the uh, madrab, okay, the racket. It reaches the racket with momentum 0.9 kilogram meter per second. So there is a tennis ball and this racket, this tennis racket, and the ball moves toward the tennis racket with a momentum. So he doesn't give you uh, the speed or the mass, he gives you the momentum directly. So the momentum equals 0.9 kilogram meter per second. So the racket will hit the ball. The racket will hit the ball. He says here it becomes in contact with the racket for 0.005 second. So he gives you the time wh uh, while the force is applied to the ball. So when the racket hits the ball, it applies a force. I will call it the force of racket. For how long for time delta t equals 0 0.005 second? So when you hit the ball with this force, what will happen? It rebounds back. So it then rebounds with a momentum 1.2. So when it rebounds back, it rebounds with a momentum Let's call it P final, and the first one P initial. It rebounds with a momentum 1.2 kilogram meter per second. What is the force exerted by the racket on the ball? So here I have initial momentum. I have final momentum. I have the, the time of the force. And he asks for the force. So this is impulse and momentum. How to solve it? The force of the racket. Time is the time it's applied to the ball equals the change in momentum. So here I have directly the momentum. So I would say P final minus P initial. The most important here is you need to remember that the momentum is a vector. Momentum is a vector. So it has direction. And in this problem, we have two directions. I have direction to the left and direction to the right. Like I have two opposite directions. So I will say, for example, the negative direction is to the left. So this P initial will be negative 0.9 because it's to the left. And the momentum to the right, I will take it positive. OK? So let's apply. And this is a problem, actually. Most of you forget to use uh, the vectors while they are dealing with momentums. So FR, time is the time of application here, 0, 0, 0,5 seconds, equals P final, which is 1.2, minus P initial is negative 9, because it's to the left. So I will find VR. It will be, it will be what? 420 Newton. 420 Newton. So this is the force of the racket. Somebody might ask, what if I draw this problem like you might draw the problem the other side? And we will say, if the ball comes to the racket and rebounds back in the opposite direction, so everything will be reversed. So in this case, P initial is 0.9 and B final is 1.2. And the force is applied in this direction. It's like a mirror. So can I do that? Yes, you can. Because here he didn't mention any directions. He didn't say it's moving to the east or to the west, to the east or to the west. He didn't say anything. So you are free to draw it the way you like. So what if you draw it this way? In this case, you might say, OK, so the 0.9 will be positive, and the 1.2 will be negative. So when you apply the equation, P times delta T, it will be P final is negative 1.2 minus P initial is 0.9. So the result at the end, so this is if, uh, the result at the end, if R, becomes negative 420 newton it's fine it's okay if you find it negative it's okay 
but in the exam we in the exams or in on in the quizzes if we have such a problem that has two probabilities like some people will get it negative some people will get it positive we will ask you what is the value what is the value of the force or what is the magnitude magnitude of the force so in this case when i ask you what is the value or what is the magnitude you will remove the negative if you get it negative you will remove the negative and you will write down the positive value only okay guys so if you solve it in any way get it positive or negative so in this case you use the value only conservation of momentum conservation what's the meaning of conservation conservation means that you keep a certain amount constant so you keep a certain amount non-changeable you don't change it okay in some cases momentum becomes conserved the momentum becomes conserved. it does not change when is that it happens in collisions in case of collision but there is a condition if no external forces act on a group of objects if no external forces external forces like what like if you push an object like friction all of these are external forces but he says if no external forces are applied on a group of objects their total momentum will not change their total total momentum does not change give me example the collision if we have two balls they have certain speeds uh, v a and v b okay and they have masses of course so they, they have momentums if you sum the momentums p1 or a plus pb it gives you the total momentum of the two balls at the beginning so this is called the total momentum the mass times the velocity of the first one plus the mass times the velocity of the second one and you need you need to take care of the sign positive or negative this is called the total momentum and then they will collide they will collide together after collision the first one might move to the left the second one might move to the right so their momentums change momentums will change the first one will have a momentum let's call p1 prime it's a new momentum or pa prime the second one will have a momentum pb prime that's a new momentum because it will have new speed okay but when you sum the two momentums pa prime plus pb prime that's called total momentum but after collision this is the total momentum after collision the principle says what the total momentum before collision equals the total momentum after collision so this is the principle of conservation of momentum the condition here is what there should be or there must be no friction no friction no external forces in this case the total momentum is conserved the total momentum does not change the total momentum before collision equals the total momentum after collision let's see it with some symbols if i have ball a and ball b the ball a has a velocity va the ball b has a velocity vb so the momentum of the first ball is mass times velocity the momentum of the second ball is mass times velocity if you sum this one plus this one but taking in, into account the signs, okay? So this is the total momentum before collision. Then there will be a collision, they will collide. So this one moves in this way, this one moves in this way with new speeds, new velocities here. He called it here VA prime, VB prime. 
you might call it v a dash and v b dash it's up to you the momentum after collision is times v the momentum after collision for the other one is mass times velocity if you sum this one plus this one also you will take care of signs this is called the total momentum after collision both are equal the total here equals the total here but the individual momentum is not the same like the momentum after collision so the momentum at the beginning for a is different from the momentum after collision and for the other one its momentum is different it changes the momentum changes but the total momentum the total momentum stays conserved or stays constant okay so the total momentum does not change let's try to solve a problem two particles mass 1.5 kilogram and mass 2 3.5 kilogram they undergo a one-dimensional head-on as shown in the figure their initial velocity is 12 meter per second east so the first one has a velocity 12 meter per second east so this one will have positive velocity and the other one 7.5 meter per second west so this one will have negative velocity two particles stick together stick together means so they will stick together after collision what does it mean like after collision they will stick together and they will move with the same velocity so they will move with the same velocity let's call their velocity after collision i will call it v prime v prime okay that's because he said they stick together so they will have the same velocity what is the speed after collision find their speed after collision i will apply the conservation of momentum i will apply this equation total momentum equals total momentum let's see the momentum m1 times the speed v the velocity v1 plus the momentum or the mass sorry mass m1 times velocity v1 plus mass m2 times velocity v2 equals the same after collision m1 times v prime plus m2 times v prime they have the same velocity after the first mass is 1.5 kilogram the first velocity is 12 positive plus second mass is 3.5 kilogram second velocity is negative 7.5 to the west uh, i can take this velocity common factor because it's the same so you will say m1 plus m2 times v prime m1 plus m2 is 1.5 plus 3.5 okay so now you can find v prime v prime equals all of this stuff divided by this number which is 5 so the result will be negative negative 1.65 meter per second okay negative 1.6 meter per second okay guys so this is a velocity after collision he asks for the speed so the speed is 1.6 meter per second let's try another one two blocks sliding on frictionless surface as we said in in, in to, to conserve the momentum there should be no friction no friction two blocks sliding on frictionless surface as shown in the figure the smaller block has a mass m and velocity two times vi the bigger one has a mass three m's three times m and only a velocity vi so there is a ratio here guys he gives you a ratio m and m. two vi and vi okay eventually at the end the 
smaller block will reach to the larger one because it has higher speed. It has double the speed. And it will collide with it. And it sticks, sticks. Sticks means they will have the same velocity. So they will move after collision with a velocity, I will call it V prime. What is the speed of the two blocks after collision? I will apply the conservation of the first mass, m, times the first velocity, 2 times vi, plus, and it is positive velocity to the right, and here it's to the right, plus second mass, 3m, times second velocity, vi, equals the first mass, we can we can make it like, like, like the previous problem. We can take the V prime common factor. So the first mass M plus the second mass 3M times V prime. So M plus 3M, that's 4 times M times V prime. So how to solve this one? We can remove, we can divide over mass on in all sides. We can divide over the mass in all sides. So 2 times vi plus 3 times vi equals 4 times v prime. So v prime here equals what? We can say 2 vi plus 3 vi, that's 5 vi. 5 v initial equals 4 times v prime. Therefore, the v prime equals what? 5 over 4 times v initial. So this is V prime, 5 over 4 times V initial. You can find also the conservation of momentum like in the rocket propulsion, Daf al sarukhi How is that? The, the rocket, it moves upward. So to, to push the rocket upward, there must be an opposite momentum downward, which is the moment of the propulsion or the gas here. Okay, so the expelled gas coming with very high speed and very high mass, so a big amount of mass and velocity. So the momentum of the expelled gas equals the momentum of the rocket. They are equal. Okay. So we can say the momentum of the rocket, which is the mass of the rocket times the velocity of the rocket, equals the mass of the gas times the velocity of the gas. So also we can apply the conservation of momentum to the rocket motion. For the rifle, when you shoot with a rifle, also, we can apply the conservation of momentum. If you have a rifle with mass M, and it has a bullet, Rasasa, bullet with a mass small M, when you shoot, the mass will move with very high speed, big V. But on the other side, the rifle rebounds back. Rebounds means what? Yartad, Yuara. It rebounds back with a velocity V. So I have here two motions. The bullet moves forward while the rifle rebounds back. There is a conservation of momentum here between the, the, the rifle and the bullet. The momentum of the bullet equals the momentum of the rifle. So the mass of the bullet Time is the mass, uh, the time is the velocity of the bullet equals the mass of the rifle time is the velocity of the rifle. Conservation of momentum. Okay. So here in this problem, he says what? A rifle with mass 1.2 kilogram. So this is mass of rifle. A bullet with mass 6 grams. So the mass of the bullet equals 6 grams, it should be 6 over a 1,000 kilogram. So it's 0 0.006 kilogram. I will deal with kilogram, not gram. The bullet moves with a velocity 600 meter per second. 
So the velocity of the bullet, 600 meter per second. If external forces acting on the rifle can be ignored, so there, to, to conserve the momentum also, there should be no external forces. No external forces. So what is the recoil velocity? The recoil velocity. So right, the dead of the rifle. So here you have a rifle and a bullet. The bullet will move with a velocity V equals 600. And the rifle rebounds or recoils with a velocity V rifle. I need to find V rifle. So I will say the mass the mass of the rifle times the velocity of the rifle equals the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet. Mass of the bullet is 6 over a thousand. This is the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet is 600 meter per second. Mass of the rifle is 1.2 kilogram times the velocity of the rifle that I need. So I will say VR equals what? 3. Can you, can you do it, guys? Three, that's right. So three meter per second. This is the recoil velocity of the rifle. 120 kilogram astronaut is at rest in space and wants to return to his space station by throwing two kilogram hammer at 30 kilogram, 30 kilometer per hour. There is some person in the space, in the free space. There is no gravity, there is no external forces. And he holds a hammer, he holds a hammer in his hand. So that's like we, we somebody imagines this problem. It's not real problem, okay? So if he throw this hammer, what will happen? If he throw the hammer, he will have a reversed motion. What is the relation? The relation is momentum is conserved. The momentum of the hammer equals the momentum of the astronaut. So if he throw the hammer in a certain direction, directly he will move to the reverse direction. What is the relation? The two momentums are the same. So the momentum of the astronaut equals the momentum of the hammer. So the mass times velocity of the astronaut equals the mass times velocity of the hammer. So here the astronaut is 120 kilogram. And I want to know what is his velocity if he throws the hammer and the hammer is 2 kilogram at a speed 30 kilometer per hour. So I will find the astronaut velocity. It will be 2 times 30 divided by 120. That's half kilometer per hour. So we can abbreviate this stuff There are two objects, two objects, object A and object B. And there is no external force over those two objects. If they separate, like one of them will move to a certain direction, the other one must move to the opposite direction. What is the relation? The two momentums are the same. The momentum of B equals the momentum of A like the astronaut, like the rifle and the bullet, like the uh, rocket, okay? All of these cases, all of these cases, two objects at the beginning, they have no external force, but one of them, like the bullet, like the, the gas, like the hammer in this case, it moves in a certain direction, so this will push the other one to the opposite direction. What is the relation? The two momentums are the same. 
the two momentums are the same. Okay, guys. An astronaut at rest base fires a thruster pistol. So he has he has a pistol, and it releases gas. Okay, it releases some gas. So uh, that expels 35 gram of hot gas. So this is the mass of the gas at a speed 875, very high speed. So this is the speed of gas, as shown in the figure. So at the beginning, at the beginning, this is an astronaut, and he is in the outer space. There is no gravity. There is no, there is no forces. There are no forces. So he has the pistol, and he rest. He and the pistol. So he is object A, and the pistol is object B. So he will fire, or, or, or the gas in the pistol, I should say the gas in the pistol is B. So he will fire some gas or whatever. Okay. So this will push him, if the gas is released to the left, this will push him to the right. Okay. So he will release 35 gram of gas with 70 875 this will cause him to move to the other side his mass his mass is 84 kilogram what is the motion or what is the speed of him i will say the mass of the gas time is the velocity of the gas equal the mass of the astronaut times his velocity the mass of the gas is 35 gram so you need to divide it over a thousand, convert it into a kilogram. Time is its speed 875. The mass of the astronaut is 84 kilogram times his speed. So I will find his speed. It will be I think 0.365 meter per second. So this is the speed of the astronaut. Uh, I would like you to look at this problem. It, it, this is like two problems. The first problem is collision. The second problem is projectile. So you will try to combine both of them to solve this problem. So please try to read it and try to solve it if you cannot. I think I solved it in one of the videos uh, where I solved some problems. If you can find the solution, you might ask me during the office hours. So thank you so much. This is the end of the lecture.